Now is the time of uh, uh, Antonio Candelieri. Antonio is a PhD assistant professor for the Department of Economics, Management and Statistics at the University of Milano Bicocca, Italy. His interests and activities are focused on machine learning, data science, Bayesian optimization and the interplay between optimization and machine learning. With respect to application domain, he worked on the design and development of machine learning based decision support system in healthcare smart water distribution networks, personalized and sustainable mobility, critical infrastructure, protection and resilience. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Antonio. Thank you so much, Danilo. Thank you so much for inviting me to this conference. It's the first time for me at Tiny Machine Learning. I'm really happy and proud to be here. Uh, even because I'm from the, let's say, more traditional in brackets machine learning community, but I think this work, it could be really important and interesting because it represents um, a first attempt of contamination between the two communities. Uh, and I heard a lot, many times during these days, about the possibility to make automated machine learning aware about the, the hardware. So, I would like to start with a very, uh, very well-known problem of the hyperparameters optimization. Uh, you know that is a very, uh, very well-known and expensive task. So basically, we have a machine learning algorithm with some uh, number of hyperparameters that we want to tune. Uh, each hyperparameter has a specific domain. And basically, a subset of the Cartesian product of these, uh, let's say, domains represent our uh, search space that could be very huge, very large. Uh, so basically, we want to minimize some kind of uh, loss function uh, with respect to the hyperparameters value. But this loss function that is usually computed in cross-validation is for sure black box, because it depends on a cross-validation procedure. It is expensive, of, for sure, because we have to train and validate each one of the configuration of the hyperparameters that we want to take into account. And uh, of course, it could be multi-extremal, so it can have many local minima in this case. Uh, for sure, grid search is the most, let's say, simple hyperparameter search method. It, is, uh, it, it was widely used and accepted also in the traditional machine learning community in order to tune the hyperparameters of your algorithm at least up to 10 or five years ago. Now we are moving towards, let's say, more uh, complicated or sophisticated, let's say, approaches. But of course, grid search is easy to implement, is embarrassingly parallel if you have computational resources, of course. In this example, we want to maximize the accuracy, just a toy example with uh, uh, just one hyperparameters. And so I test, let's say, uh, sorry, the pointer, okay. Uh, sorry, we have decided to use 10 different values of our, of our hyperparameter, and we have observed the different values of the accuracy. But uh, basically, this is the best results at the end of our grid search. But if we assume to know the accuracy on uh, the entire search space, we can easily understand that we are really far away from the actual optimum. So basically, because the grid search is not sample efficient. Uh, the question that automated machine learning tried to solve during the last decade is not only to democratize machine learning, but is to try to make a very simple, efficient search of the best hyperparameters configuration. So basically, the, the question was, might we find a better solution by using the same number of trial of a grid search? The question is yes, and is based on Bayesian optimization that is was already, let's say, quoted by the previous speaker. The idea is that we can start with few random, uh, let's say, hyperparameter values. In this example, I use just three different, uh, let's say, value of the hyperparameters and observe the associated accuracy. Uh, the other, uh, so we can fit a probabilistic surrogate model of the accuracy function in order to predict the accuracy for any other values of the hyperparameter. Of course, it is important that the surrogate model is probabilistic because we need of both the prediction, that is the blue line, but also the uncertainty, that is the shaded area. Why? 
Because if we consider only the, the prediction, so basically the blue line, the maximum with respect to our approximation has been already achieved. Choice to explore the search space. But if we use the, uh, let's say, also the uncertainty, and so basically we are optimistic in face of the uncertainty, we can try to uh, optimize, to, to maximize the upper confidence bound of this probabilistic regression model. And so basically, the next promising uh, hyperparameter values to check is this one. Okay, so we have the possibility to move, uh, to explore uh, close to, let's say, the current maximum uh, of our observation. Of course, we can train and validate the new model with this value of the hyperparameter and observe the actual value of the, uh, of the accuracy. So we can update our probabilistic regression model. And in this case, you can see that the prediction does not change significantly, but the uh, uncertainty, of course, is reduced. This is one of the possible effects of Bayesian optimization. But we are performing just four trials four values of the hyperparameters. We still have more, uh, let's say, trials. So we can continue, and the next value is this one, and again, we can train and validate our, uh, let's say, machine learning algorithm with this value of the hyperparameter, register or observe the actual value of the accuracy, and again, update the probabilistic surrogate model. And in this case, you can see that the shape, so the prediction, is also changed. But again, we have more trials, and we can say that, again, if we maximize the upper confidence bound, we are really close to the, to the uh, uh, actual global maximum of our unknown accuracy function. And so we have more trials, and basically we get closer, 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 and closer. So, if we compare the grid search and the Bayesian optimization, we can easily understand why Bayesian optimization is sample efficient, because with the same number of trials, or even less, it was able to find the global optimum, in this toy example for sure, but it, this is the reason why Bayesian optimization is at the core of most of the automated machine learning tools, both commercial uh, or just like also Vizier, or also um, also, let's say, academic. But now the problem is that this works very well in the automated machine learning community, in the traditional machine learning community, because we don't need to, let's say, we don't deal with deployability, we don't deal with tiny. The problem is that this new community requires to have more osmosis, more, uh, let's say, contamination among them. Basically, uh, the AutoML and NAS uh, uh, frameworks can find accurate models, basically through Bayesian optimization, with a small number of trials, but they are typically performed on large computational platforms. They cannot direct, directly deal with deployability. Uh, and this leads to accurate models that could be not deployable on a tiny device. So basically what happens is that if you use automated machine learning as is, you can perform on your, let's say, personal computer or cloud or whatever, the automated machine learning, then you take your best model, you, uh, let's say, translate this model, for instance, by using STM32 Cube AI, deploy the model on the, uh, let's say, on the device, and only at the end you know if the model is deployable or not. But if it is not deployable, this means that you have wasted a lot of resources in this loop. If you want, have, let's say, if you want to have, uh, let's say, visualization about this, you can consider the same example that I showed you before, where the accuracy now is, uh, sorry, the accuracy now is uh, dotted, a dotted line, with respect to the uncomputable, uh, sorry, the undeployable configuration. So this means that if we go uh, to the Bayesian optimization, the Bayesian optimization converges towards the global optimum, but all this region is associated to models, that are, to models that are not deployable on the device. So basically all the computation except one are undeployable. 
So this means that Bayesian optimization, automated machine learning, is not aware about the constraints, the hardware constraints of the device. And uh, something completely unexpected, if we take into account the grid search, grid search has a solution that is close to the only target, let's say, model that is the, um, let's say, the only deployable and also accurate model. So how to improve Bayesian optimization in order to be, uh, let's say, uh, hardware, uh, hardware aware or constraint aware? Our idea it was to integrate, to perform a constrained automated machine learning, uh, uh, let's say, framework. So basically, you, we have removed the loop here, and we have included into the loop the integration of STM32 QBI in order to uh, observe for each one of the models that Bayesian optimization propose, not only the accuracy, but also the deployability and undeployability. This information is crucial in order to suggest, to, to suggest during the iteration of Bayesian optimization new models that are both accurate but also deployable. So when we, let's say, talk about automated machine learning in the machine learning community, the only way in which resources are considered is to try to, in, uh, it is made basically in multi-objective optimization in order to reduce running, let's say, uh, time on the virtual machine during training. So they search for trade-offs, basically. But we are not interested in, in tiny machine learning in trade-offs. Our, let's say, our aim is to uh, find an ac the most accurate model given the uh, hardware constraints of the device where the final model must run. So basically, we have used the two information in our approach, both the deployability that is exactly black box, just like the accuracy, and the accuracy. And we have divided the search process in two different phases. The first phase is about estimate the sub, which is the sub-region of the search space associated to deployable models. And the second one is traditional Bayesian optimization within this, let's say, portion of the search space. This is just an animation about how the two phases work. So basically, we start with four different, uh, four different let's say, hyperparameters values, so four different configurations. Three of them are deployable and one not. And so basically, in the first phase, the problem is a classification problem. We use here, let's say, maximum, I, uh, maximum margin classifier, SVM, in order to estimate the feasible, uh, the, the deployable region. So the next, let's say, configuration to test is taken in order to better approximate this, uh, let's say, this estimation. So picking a point close to the boundaries, but in order to cover the search space. So in this case, we have a new point that is a deployable model. And so our, let's say, estimation is going to shrink. But in the next, again, we select an undeployable model. And so our estimation increase. This process goes ahead iteratively up to the end of phase one. Then in phase two, we have our traditional model, but the, but the optimization is performed only on the estimation of the, feasible, of the deployable region, the white area. So basically, we can see that we can achieve the optimum, okay? And we have used four, let's say, uh, trial for the initialization, four for phase one, and two for phase two. So basically, the same number of trials that I use in grid search and also in traditional Bayesian optimization. So we have performed the two experiments by using the, the board of ST. Uh, the first experiment is related to user identification from, from working activity data sets. And we started from a convolutional neural network, a baseline. Uh, and we have considered, uh, in order to optimize its hyperparameters, and we have considered these search spaces for the two boards. So basically, it is important to remark that uh, the, uh, let's say, the baseline network is not deployable on the smallest board 
of, that we have selected from ST, uh, given any possible compression factors. But at the really end, if we compare the results, you, we can see, we can start from the big board, you can see that at the end we can obtain a model that is both, let's say, quite more accurate than the baseline and is, let's say, deployable on the big board with compression one. And the baseline is, was not, was, uh, sorry, I cannot come back. Yeah. And the baseline was not deployable directly as is on the, on the big board. Okay, uh, the same also for the compression factor uh, times four, okay. Uh, the, the results are different for the tiny board because basically we can obtain a model that is deployable, but we have a reduction in terms of accuracy. Uh, for sure, okay, because uh, we can try to, let's say, deploy uh, these, uh, a model uh, uh, at any cost, let's say, for, uh, on, the, on, the, the, on the device. Ah, in this slide, okay, the, uh, the constraints are related to RAM, ROM, and X cross accuracy, but we have also reported MAC in order to understand, it is not a constraint, but in order to understand if there is any gain also in terms of MAC. And of course, if the compression factor is times eight, we are able to obtain a, uh, a model that is deployable on the, on the board, on the tiny board, and it is also accurate uh, as the baseline, more or less. Okay, these are results that have been, let's say, uh, presented at the International Conference on Artificial Neural Networks two years ago, uh, during COVID, uh, unfortunately, but the work continues with respect to, the, to this uh, framework. We have performed a new experiment, for instance, this one that is about image classification. Again, we have a uh, baseline network uh, uh, to, to, to consider for hyperparameters optimization, but in this experiment, we have also included an hyperparameter that is related to the architecture of the, of the convolutional uh, neural network, especially the possibility to skip one of the hidden layer in the convolutional neural network. In this case, the baseline was not for sure deployable neither on the uh, big or the, uh, let's say, tiny board provided by ST. But our approach is able at the end to obtain for the big board a deployable model that is also more accurate than the baseline and the solution uh, takes, takes into account also the removal of one uh, specific, specifically if I will remember the first uh, convolutional layer into the baseline network. And uh, also for the tiny board that is the smallest that we have considered, we obtain uh, a deployable model, of course, with a reduction uh, of uh, accuracy that could be considered acceptable since it is less than 5%. We have also compared our approach with other Bayesian optimization or automated machine learning approaches came in, coming from the, let's say, traditional machine learning community, in particular the, the framework BOB, Bayesian optimization and hyperband, by including some penalization with respect to the generation of undeployable, uh, let's say, models. But as you can see, this is the misclassification error instead of accuracy, the misclassification error over the uh, iteration of the Bayesian optimization. And you can see, we are the blue line, that basically we are more, let's say, uh, effective and efficient with respect to Bob, both on the, um, let's say, big and tiny board. With respect to code, you can find for sure a GitHub that is public with the core of the algorithm uh, in particular, it was developed in R, this, this preliminary, let's say, repository. But we have also other two uh, private projects. At the moment, they are private. Uh, one in R and one in Python uh, that basically integrates STM Cube AI and perform the same experiment that I show you, show you here. Uh, in any case, you can contact me and I can, let's say, if you are interested in collaborating, in sharing the, uh, let's say, the, the repository. But they are not public at the moment. 
So in conclusion, the proposed approach allows to obtain accurate and deployable models, also on very tiny devices, without requiring any further compression or pruning. This, is, this does not mean that they are not useful, but that the model is able to provide, the, the approach is able to provide a model that is already deployable and accurate. And then you can decide to, let's say, perform any kind of quantization or compression or pruning in order to increase efficiency. Uh, again, it is important to understand that it is, it is, it is a constrained approach and it is not a multi-objective. In any case, it could be interesting to take into account other metrics, and these are, let's say, ongoing works, uh, to, to, to address in other kind of application. For instance, we can, take, uh, in a, we, we can consider Mac as a further constraint if we, take, if we, let's say, consider a specific application where uh, inference, uh, the inference time uh, is, let's say, critical. And so we want to, pose, uh, we, to impose some kind of a constraint on the inference time and to use max as a proxy. Or we can consider Mac as a proxy of the battery usage and to consider so uh, to include the Mac as, a multi -ob uh, as another objective uh, along with accuracy. So in that case, we have a multi-objective constrained Bayesian optimization problem. I should be on time, so thank you for the attention, and I'd like to reply to any question that you have. Um, no, uh, really interesting talk. Uh, so when it comes to deployability, I'm curious the case studies that you showed um, is the main barrier to deployability uh, sort of memory size of activations, or are there other barriers uh, to deployability? Could you uh, speak to that? Sorry, I, I cannot hear very well. I hope to 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 uh, let's say to understood the the, the question. Uh, if the question is about the constraints, we have considered these constraints that are related to RAM ROM usage and X cross accuracy. That is basically the uh, let's say the compliance between the accuracy of the model trained on the, let's say, computer on the cloud and the accuracy of the model after its translation to be run on the, on the device. But there's no quantization? Or it's not, is, quant no, it's no, not there quantized. is not quantization, no, no quantization. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, thank you so much. We are uh, five minutes in delay. Thank you so much, okay. Antonio, uh, for your great talk. You're welcome. Thank you. And we are very thankful for, for our sponsors. Uh, the executive, the premier sponsor this year is, is H Impulse. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, executive sponsors are ARM, Deep Light, uh, uh, Qualcomm, and Sintiant. Uh, Platinum sponsor analog devices, uh, Brainchip, Infineon, ClickerTech, Latent AI, NXP, uh, Reality AI, Renaissance, Sony Semiconductor, and Synaptics. Really very diverse company, gr great companies uh, who are really driving uh, tiny ML forward. Uh, and um, uh, gold sponsors, PhotoHub, MicroAI, Prophecy, Seed Studio, SenseML, uh, ST Microelectronics, uh, Synsense, Exmos. And we have a list of uh, civil sponsors, Avion Devices, Aspinity, Siva, Emza, uh, Greenwave Technologies, Gravity, Hymix, HOTG, Imagimob, um, Itemis, uh, Lattice, Nota, uh, OmniML, Pixart, Plumerai, Kixo, uh, Rackner, Rixen, SAP, Stream Analyze, Texel, and Google. We are very uh, thankful for their support and more importantly for them being part of this community and driving it forward.